So I just got back from the movie theater. I went to go watch the new Dune movie. Yes, the movie is called Dune, like a sand dune. <laughs> and it's based on a popular book series that came out many, many, many years ago. And they actually made a movie back in like the early 80s, I believe. Honestly, I did not watch that movie. I knew about it for years, though. I just never got around to watching it. It's on my watch list. And I actually own the, the, the first two Dune books. And I never got around to actually reading those either. <laughs> but I heard a lot of things about the series from fans and friends that have read the books and things like that. And it was always something that I really wanted to check out. So... When I heard about this new movie and saw the trailer, I was like, you know what? I think this will be a good point to jump in and just see how things are. I know it's not like the book, and I know that the old movie was very, very different from the book. People still liked it, but it was very different. But I have to say, I really enjoyed this movie, so we're going to do a spoiler review halfway through this review. And this initial part is going to be spoiler free so you don't need, you don't have to worry about spoilers not going to spoil anything uh you can make a choice you know on your own if you want to go watch the movie or not but i'm just gonna you know generally talk about it and then i'm gonna say spoiler 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 and get to the spoilers of the movie so uh movie theater didn't have that many people in it. I know ever since the pandemic, not a lot of people have been going to the movie theaters and stuff like that, so there was like barely anybody in there. I did go, you know, in the afternoon, so that's probably why as well. But, uh, got some popcorn, had some uh, Pepsi to drink, and I sat down and started watching this movie. Um, one thing I have to say immediately is this movie is not your typical, like, sci-fi movie. Like, don't go into this expecting, like, Star Wars or The Hunger Games or Maze Runner, Twilight. You know, kind of like those teen fantasy or teen sci-fi uh, type movies. Uh, Star Wars is definitely not a teen sci-fi. I, I shouldn't even put that in that kind of category. But don't go in expecting, like, Star Wars. I know a lot of people saw the trailer and were thinking like, oh, this is like a sci-fi action movie, Star Wars, Star Trek, and it might be a little bit more on the, be on the little, like, more on the Star Trek side than Star Wars. Um, this movie is like a really, like, philosophical and mystical, uh, sci-fi film, so kind of like how Game of Thrones was like a political fantasy show like a violent political drama uh, show, I would say, like a fantasy. Uh, this is definitely more on like the philosophical and mystic side of a sci-fi. Uh, if I can compare it hmm, to other movies, I would have a very hard time. I would say the only thing that possibly comes close is this old movie called Stargate. If any of you ever watched Stargate, that's a fantastic sci-fi movie. Uh, came out in the 90s. It's really good. They still play it on TV every once in a while. Um, but it, it has like a very like classic sci-fi feel to it. So I really like that. I'm sure the books are like that more. Uh, the music in this movie is amazing. Uh, Hans Zimmer did the music, so <laughs> if you liked Inception or Interstellar or things like that, you already know what Hans Zimmer can provide, so m music in this movie is amazing. It's probably going to win some kind of a award. Uh, it's also extremely loud, so don't go in expecting like very chill and soft ASMR sounds. It's more like very uh, loud and kind of scary at times. It kind of makes you stand up a bit on your chair, like, oh, what's going to happen? So the music, definitely amazing in this film. 
and then I have to talk about the cinematography, like, the visuals and stuff like that, like, whoa, this movie is beautiful, it looks so good, there were times where I was just watching and I was like, you know what, I would really like to just walk there in the desert for a few minutes, you know, not the whole day, but just a few minutes, and there are these early parts of the movie where they weren't on Dune yet, and it was like a nice area, it looked like it was probably filmed in like Ireland or Scotland or something, very beautiful area, uh, just really nice scenes in this movie, and I really enjoyed just like that part of it, and special effects and action, they were pretty well done as well as well, I would say, like, this movie, like I mentioned before, is not, like, an action sci-fi movie, so don't go in expecting, uh, Predator or Aliens or, uh, Star Wars or something like that. Go in expecting a slow movie with a lot of talking, a lot of philosophical discussions, and a lot of, like, mysticism and magic and things like that. So, it's definitely, like, a vibe, like, I sat there, and it, the movie kind of, like, pulls you in with, like, mystery and things like that, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen, so, I know a lot of people are going to watch this movie, I have to talk about the actors now, uh, because of, uh, Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, uh, both of them have their huge fan bases, especially on TikTok, I have to say that, for the last week or two, Every single TikTok, like, that I go through is usually about Dune. Like, I'm scrolling, and then I'll see a, a Dune video about Timothy Chalamet. I'll scroll again, I'll see another TikTok video about Zendaya or Timothy Chalamet. So, uh, yeah, chances are you probably saw <laughs> all those TikToks as well if you're on TikTok. So, movies definitely getting pushed out there. Tons of memes about it. A lot of people discussing it. And just like with other movies, like, uh, the, the same director, I believe, that did this movie, he did, uh, the last Blade Runner movie, and a lot of people went to go watch that Blade Runner movie, because they were like, oh, it has Ryan Gosling in it, and then they were like, what kind of movie is this? I didn't understand anything, but Blade Runner, of course, is a fantastic movie, that, that last one was amazing, so I would say the same thing happened here, a lot of people were like, oh, Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, this is like a action romance movie, I'm gonna go watch it, and then they're there kind of sitting like, what is going on in this movie, so, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I could see some people possibly just going to go watch it, because everyone is talking about it, so just be aware of that, uh, be aware that it's a movie with, like, a lot of talking, not a lot of action, don't go in expecting a romance-type film, but, uh, wow, Timothy Chalamet did a fantastic job in this, they, he needs to be doing more movies, like, wow, he's he really good at acting, and, I mean, we already knew that, but, but still, did a good job, uh, I really liked him as the main character of Paul Atreides, oh, I, I hope I said that name right, uh, they say his name, like, a million times in the movie, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he did a great job, there's other fantastic actors in this movie, like Jason Momoa, probably my favorite guy in this whole movie, uh, he absolutely steals the show in every scene that he's in, did a great job, I mean, he's Aquaman, he's Cal Drogo in Game of Thrones, and now he's playing an awesome character called, uh, Duncan in this movie, and, Duncan's just amazing, he's awesome, so, lots of cool scenes in this movie, uh, honestly, really, really liked it, uh, if I had to give this movie, like, a rating, I would give it, like, a 7.5 out of 10, and that's a pretty good rating, and I'll explain a little bit in my spoiler area why I had to take away some points, like, there were points in this movie where I was like, oh, this movie's an 8, but then there were some things where I was kind of like, nah, this movie is more like a 7 out of 10. And then I just kept, you know, rating it 8 or 7, 8 or 7. So, kind of decided on 7.5 out of 10 rating. So, still extremely good, worth watching. But there's a few little things I did not like about it. Um, but, uh, overall, very good sci-fi movie. 
this is my kind of sci-fi. There's actually a movie, Disney, made a bunch of years ago. Like, I, I don't know how many years ago. Eight years, six years ago. Uh, called John Carter of Mars, or John Carter. And you probably never heard of this movie because no one watched it. And it's this, like, amazing sci-fi fantasy movie that Disney made. I really loved it. I love the story and the world. And then, like, no one watched the movie, and Disney was like, this was our worst performing movie. We're never going to make a sequel. So I'm still a little bit sad about that, because I actually enjoyed this film. And that's how I kind of feel about Dune. It's It really builds the world. Like, there are many moments in the movie where I was very excited to learn more about characters and their backstory. And everything is, like, full of mystery and, you know, different planets and technology and races and all these things going on. You're like, whoa, who is that? Or, whoa, what's going on here? And, oh my, what's going to happen? And you're always asking these questions. You're wondering what's going to happen. And it, it kind of pulls you in and the world feels real. Like, while I watched the movie, I was like, wow, Dune, this is like a real thing. And then when the movie finished, I was like, oh, oh, it's just a fantasy movie, you know. Everything is fake, it's sci-fi. But the world was very engaging, kind of like how Lord of the Rings really made you feel at points like, oh, I'm in the Shire, or, oh, we're in Mordor now. That's exactly how Dune made you feel, like every single area felt unique and different. And it's unlike anything I've ever seen in any other movies, so big thumbs up for that uh so yeah let's let's get over to the uh spoiler 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 section you've been warned we're talking about spoilers now so wow uh this movie <laughs> had a bunch of pretty creepy scenes in it like there were some parts with like weird like chanting and there's like witches. This movie has like space witches in it. I'm sure the books talk about it more. But yeah, they're like legit witches, like, you know, from like fantasy books and stuff like that. Uh, Paul Atreides' mom apparently is like a witch. And she gave birth to him. And the movie kind of explains this in like a weird way. But apparently she like chose to have a boy instead of a girl. I don't know how she did that, but she's a witch and because of that he got like special like witch powers like he can have visions and predict the future see things in his dreams and he can, he also has like this voice uh, i'm not sure if any of you ever watched the tv series preacher but in that show or comic book preacher he has the ability to say stuff with his voice and command people to do what he wants and that's basically what Paul Atreides has as, like, a superpower in this movie. Now he's, like, a level one person user, so he still needs to level up this ability. Like, he's definitely out of, uh, out of practice. His mom is a pro, though. And witches apparently can command people, especially if they're more powerful. So, uh, Paul Atreides in this movie uses that a few times right at the beginning of the movie. Uh, his mom's like, command me to give you some water. And he's like, give me some water. And then it doesn't work. And then he says it again. And he like makes his mom, like commands her to do it. And she has to. It's pretty crazy stuff. Um, really like that. Uh, Paul Atreides' dad in this movie is like a really important figure. And he is played by a... Uh, the guy from uh, the recent Star Wars movies. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Uh, oh my goodness. I can't believe I... Um, what is his name? What is his name? He's friends with uh, Finn in the... It's not Ray, by the way. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm legit typing it right now. Okay, Poe po Dameron. I can't believe I forgot Poe Dameron's name. So Poe Dameron from Star Wars, that actor, plays Timothy Chalamet's dad in this movie. He does a great job. Uh, he plays like a much older dad than uh, Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron, you felt like he was like 30. In this movie, he plays a guy that's like 50 or something like that. He 
has like gray hair. She's clearly been doing this for a while. So the start of this movie kind of sets up the world. So apparently there's like this one emperor that's like the ruler of all these planets or whatever. And then underneath him, there's like different uh, houses, kind of like think medieval times where there's like the king. And then there's like, you know, barons and dukes and people that are in charge of areas uh, that the king basically gives them. Like, hey, you're in charge of this or that. So in this world of Dune, there are different planets. The emperor gives certain people uh, power over certain planets. Uh, he apparently gave one like really evil group of people uh uh, Arrakis, the planet of uh, Dune, you know, for the movie, basically. And uh, these people were kind of doing the same exact plot of the movie Avatar. Now, Dune came out before Avatar, so maybe Avatar stole from Dune. But basically, they're harvesting energy and spice from the Earth, killing the planet Arrakis in the process. So basically, they came there, they're like, hey, this stuff's valuable. We don't care about your planet. We're just going to steal the resources. And the people on that planet hated them. We're always killing them. So the emperor, he has a lot of other families and houses on different planets controlling things that he appointed. And he did not like the Atreides family because they're like very smart and intelligent. And this emperor guy, apparently, we don't even see him in the movie is apparently like very scared of being overthrown or something like that so he, he has some kind of like sneaky deal where he intentionally sends the atreides family to take over arrakis and make it peaceful and he kicks out these other guys that were you know bad to the planet there and he does this in order to make the other people mad at them so they would go kill them and then the emperor wouldn't have to deal with the possibility of the Atreides house possibly overturning him in the future or something like that there's a lot of other things happening but that's the gist of it a guy basically set up Timothy Chalamet's family in the movie to get killed and he gives them this planet so these bad guys are all like mad and stuff like that and they're plotting what they're gonna do by the way the bad guys in this movie forget the, the name of their like a creed they're like alien or something they, they're, all, they're like all like really tall, bald guys. Like, yeah, they're legit all bald and they're tall. And I have no idea what's going on. I, th I think they can like, I think they have like tentacles or spider legs or something. They look really weird and kind of gross. And it's creepy because when you first see them, you're like, bro, what is going on here? They kind of look, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. They kind of look like the weird aliens that created the aliens in the Aliens movies. If you, if any of you ever watched the Prometheus movie, basically shows like how the aliens were born or something by a weird other alien race. That they kind of look like the aliens in uh, in this Dune movie a little bit, just a lot weirder. So. Um, uh, basically, there's a bunch of other things going on. Uh, Paul Atreides has to go through, like, some tests. One of, like, the head witches of the Emperor tests him before sending him to this planet. Because she's like, oh, we have to see if you're fit to roll there or something like that. It makes him do, like, some kind of, like, painful test. Putting his hand in a box. Because, basically, he is half witch. And also half, like, royalty of his dad. So... He's got like two things going on. He's always having visions in this movie of Zendaya on uh, Arrakis. And he has these visions over and over. And they're kind of weird and you don't know what's going on. So finally they get to Arrakis. Uh, th the place is set up. People there apparently have like a belief that there's like a chosen one. And it could possibly be Paul Atreides. Even his mom thinks so. And the head witch warned her or things like that. So they're kind of setting up Paul Atreides to be a kind of like, um, you know, the one like Neo in the Matrix or something. Like the one that saves everybody. Uh, 
possibly overthrowing the emperor and there's like prophecies and things like that so the movie definitely gets into like mystical stuff but basically just to fast forward through a lot of things because I don't need to go through every every single thing but there's a lot of really cool technology in this movie but then some of the some of the other technology looks like really basic and old so it's kind of like a mixture of new and old I kind of like it um but basically once they land on this planet everybody knows something's kind of wrong uh, the people on the actual planet are not that like bad or mean to the family there they're more worried about this other like evil group this other house coming after them um which they end up actually doing they end up striking at nighttime going in there they end up uh killing uh poe dameron i forget the actor's name but poe dameron <laughs> from Star Wars, Timothy Chalamet's dad in this movie, and Timothy Chalamet and his mom, like, uh, are kidnapped by these, like, guards and taken up in a ship, and, uh, Duncan, played by Jason Momoa, escapes, and other people escape, but a lot of people just get killed, everybody there, all the equipment, everything just gets, like, obliterated, it's crazy, huge battle, um, Paul Atreides' dad, before he goes out, he has, like, this, uh, chip explosive nerve gas implanted in his tooth so when he is about to be killed by like the head bad guy he like bites down on his tooth killing himself and everybody else in the room in the process so it's kind of like a last final like haha you think you're gonna kill me i'm gonna kill all of you too uh so it was kind of cool but we later find out that the main bad guy even though it seemed like he died still survived so he's definitely going to be back in the next movie there's going to be a part two but uh he's like uh <laughs> apparently he's getting like revived in this huge tank of like black goo uh looks really creepy i have no idea what's going on with this guy uh <laughs> but um yeah so the main evil guy survives this nerve gas attack um uh, but everybody else died um Paul Atreides, you know, Timothy Chalamet and his mom got captured. They covered the mom's face with, like, a mask or something, like her mouth, so she can't speak and command them because they know she's a witch. And the guys on the plane are, like, joking and saying, like, bad stuff, you know, the typical villain stuff that they would say to a kidnapped uh, woman in these type of movies always kind of creeps me out but timothy chalamet comes to the defense of his mom like don't touch my mom or something like that and then he commands one doesn't work he does it again and he commands one guy to kill the other guy and one guy kills the other and then his mom gets freed and his mom just commands everybody because she's like pro level he still needs to train a bit um and then they basically end up killing these guys going somewhere and surviving and then they meet up with duncan jason momoa's character and they meet up with the uh, actual fremen i believe is the name of the arrakis people so they meet up with this lady a fremen uh person of this planet she's like uh native to this planet natives on this planet have like blue eyes because of the spice that's in the earth's core which is what the bad guys are trying to mine from the earth here because it's super valuable they need it for interstellar like high-speed space travel so um everybody on the planet has blue eyes so they survive they're trying to go find um the people of the planet because they they hide in little areas all over the planet and no one can usually find them because they're very well hidden think of like the tuscan raiders possibly in star wars but a lot more hidden in like secret areas and things so um uh, they're looking around the bad guys are looking for them jason momoa at one point has to sacrifice himself and he fights like 20 guys he gets stabbed and he keeps fighting he, Jason Momoa is like awesome in this movie so he saves you know uh Timothy Chalamet's mom and this other lady um by basically taking out a bunch of guys in this hallway fight and then at the end of this movie um basically I, I forgot to mention it basically this entire film 
Zendaya is like not in any of it. She is in like four dream sequences that happen over and over again, but they're like the same. So we don't even get to see Zendaya until like the last 10 minutes of this movie. And she barely says anything. So she's like a cameo in this film. So don't go in expecting a lot of Zendaya or a lot of any other character. This movie has a ton of scenes with just Timothy Chalamet. And there's like a ton of close-ups and zooms and things into his face during the movie. So if you're a fan, there's a lot of great stuff for you in this movie. But uh, the end of the movie, they basically survive a sandworm attack. Sandworms on Arrakis are like the deadliest thing. If you watched uh, The Mandalorian, Baby Yoda, and uh, The Mando, they there's like this huge fight with like a, well, sort of like a sandworm. Think of something like that, but like three times larger. And that's what you have in Arrakis. There's like these huge sandworms that have like a mouth, like a sarlacc pit in Star Wars. And it's just like swallowing people and they can sense your footsteps on the sand. So walking on the sand is like incredibly dangerous. Um, at one point at the end of the movie though, Paul Atreides is like staring down the sandworm. It's crazy and intense. Uh, they finally meet up with some Fremen. I believe the name is Fremen. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, people, there's like a group of them and they kind of rescue them. One guy wants to fight though and Timothy Chalamet's character, he has like visions of possibly dying in this fight because he sees his, he, he sees like blood on his hand and on his sword. So he's like, oh no, maybe I'm going to die, but I have to do it because they challenged his mom, but he doesn't want his mom to fight. So he steps up to the plate. Zendaya gives him like a special sword that comes from uh, the tooth of one of these sandworms and he 1v1s this guy that wants to 1v1 for honor or something dumb and I never really get those things in these movies like there's always some guy that's like oh we must fight it's the way of honor or whatever and it's like bro you're gonna get killed out here like why do you even do that whatever so Timothy Chalamet spares this guy's life like three times. This guy's getting mad because he's like, you're not fighting me for real. Sparing my life is like no honor. So until Timothy Chalamet basically end up killing this guy. And everybody's like, oh, you're one of us now. Hooray. And they go on to the village to tell them about his plan of uniting the people on this planet with his house. And then possibly going to overthrow the emperor and the government of the space galaxy. And the movie ends just like that, right when it's getting good. So I was kind of like, what? I want to watch part two. So I like the movie. Wish it had a lot more, though, but it felt long already. Very, very, very excited for the next one. Hopefully it's equally as awesome. And uh, yeah, definitely. I highly recommend checking out, um, you know, Dune. I feel like Dune's probably like one of the biggest movies of the month possibly i don't know maybe halloween is up there but definitely go watch it if you liked what i talked about uh i think you should go see it let me know your thoughts or opinions in the comments and uh yeah uh thank you all for listening to this asmr movie geek review and i'll see you all next time so long and farewell